everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be another installment in my Were They Accurate American Girl historical series. So this is the second video in this new series that I've started on my channel, basically looking at the American Girl outfits and determining if they are historically accurate or not. So, so far we have already looked at the 18th century girls. We looked a tiny bit at Kaya and we mostly looked at Felicity and Elizabeth. So that was in the last video, which I will link down below in the description. And then this week we are moving just a little bit forward into history and we are going to look at our girls from the early 1800s, meaning Caroline and Josefina. Caroline's stories take place during the War of 1812 and Josefina's stories start in 1824. So we're looking at two different decades here that frequently people would say like fall under the Regency period. Of course that is English terminology. The Regency wasn't really a thing in America at the time. But yeah, we are looking at two characters who do kind of fall under that Regency period blanket. Now that said, they come from extremely different backgrounds and we're going to see that in the clothing as well. Caroline has your traditional like Western fashion. She lives on the shores of Lake Ontario, whereas Josefina lives in what is now New Mexico, but was at the time actually just part of Mexico. So since Caroline comes a little earlier, we are going to start with her and we're going to start by looking at her meat outfit. So this is the Caroline Abbott doll with her lovely long blonde curly hair and her very, very blue eyes. And this is her meat outfit. Now, in my opinion, I think her meat outfit is, to be honest, a little bland. But then again, that's kind of how I feel about a lot of Regency fashion, period. So her meat outfit is just pink cotton. It is honestly like pretty similar to Felicity's summer dress, if you watched the last video or if you're familiar with that dress. And we have kind of a slight ampere waist right here. This dress has like a sort of built in ribbon detail that's actually part of the dress. And then there are pin tucks and another different ribbon detail down at the bottom. And she's got the little ruffle around her neckline and the sleeves with the same small pink ribbon detail that is at the bottom of the skirts here on the sleeves as well. So again, overall, it's pretty bland. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty Regency, like, I wouldn't say that pink color would be, especially because pink at this time actually was a boy's color, not a girl's color. So I don't think the pink would really be a thing much at all. But that said, it is just like a cotton Regency dress. It is a little on the shorter side you might see right here. Now I'm not as familiar with children's fashion versus adult fashion, but for adults this definitely would have been longer in the 18 teens. In the 1820s we do see the hemline start to rise, but 18 teens was still generally pretty long. These are not Caroline's actual shoes, these are Elizabeth's shoes. I don't actually have Caroline's shoes, but they are just pink ballet flats. To be honest, I mean, if you're going to get away with ballet flats in any era at all, it's the Regency period. So I'm not upset with the fact that they are ballet flats. And then she's got this straw bonnet here. It is not the right shape for the Regency. It honestly is kind of more the shape of a baseball cap, I feel like. But it is at least a bonnet. Like they tried. It's something. And it's decorated with ribbon and with little flowers. Again, I don't feel like this ribbon is at all right for this. It's kind of looks like a grow grain even though it isn't actually a grow grain but it feels like it has that texture. And just so you can see a little bit closer up of the bonnet, it just looks like this. Again, I apologize for my camera not adjusting to brightness. It just doesn't seem to like to deal with stuff like that. So hopefully it stays in focus more this time. I noticed in the last video it kept focusing on like doll's faces behind me instead of what I'm trying to show you. So that's great. So if there's any focus problems for this video, that is why. And then Caroline also comes with, I believe just like sock type stockings where they're not joined at the waist. I don't have her actual stockings, so she is just wearing tights right now. And then she also comes with these pantalettes that have little eyelet lace trim down here at the bottom. It's really, it's pretty cute. Like it's standard. I mean, I'm not mad at it at all. I think it works. 
Uh, they have an elastic at the waist, which they wouldn't have originally, but I think that's totally fine. Just like she has Velcro in the back, which, you know, whatever, it's a doll, it's totally fine. And then she also has a reticule, which I think is a really nice touch that she's got this little drawstring reticule. Actually, the style is really pretty spot on for Regency, so I'm pretty happy with that. And it's embroidered with her name and the year, Caroline Abbott, 1812. So I think that's a really nice detail that, uh, you know, not bad at all. Uh, there's also a toy top that comes in here. It's not fashion, so we're not going to talk about it, but it's cute that she comes with uh, a toy that is meaningful to her in her stories. And I think that is just about everything that she comes with. At least it's everything that I have for her in her meet. So let's go on and move on to her next outfit. I'm going in no particular order here with the outfits other than like the nearness that they are to me, but this is Caroline's travel outfit. Now Caroline's stories don't follow the typical like you have six books, they each have their own outfit type thing that you get with the older Pleasant Company and even like the older Mattel dolls. So I don't know exactly what book or what story this is supposed to go with, but it's a nice outfit. And in fact, I am absolutely in love with the detail that they put on this Spencer. I think it is one of the best detailed pieces of newer American Girl. Caroline came out, I think, in, I want to say 2011 and was retired in like 2013. She had one year that overlapped when Bee Forever came in and then they cut her completely and retired her. But we have here an Ampere dress with a ruched top and it has little puffed sleeves. So again, pretty standard Regency fair. It's about the same length as her other dress. And this has another sewn in ribbon detail at the waist. And over that, she wears this Spencer that has just complete perfect historical details like these petal shaped sleeves, which are so perfect. They've been bound with contrast here, but they are just petal shaped and just beautiful. This is actually bound with velvet, by the way, and this is velvet here around the lower part of the upper puffed sleeve, and then it's got the fitted sleeve below. It has the buttons in front. Part of me does wish that they're functional, but at the same time, functional buttons are honestly kind of a pain to do when they're this small. We'll see that with Josefina, um, but I do just really, really like this fencer. The color is a little weird, the whole color of all of this is a little weird and the fact that it doesn't even match with itself, uh, but it is very cute. Now this bonnet honestly is a much better shape than her straw bonnet. This one is kind of like a felt type bonnet and it has sort of a similar ribbon in just a different color, but nice bow detail on the side and the nice binding. And again, it's a much better shape than her bonnet that comes with her meat outfit. So I do appreciate that. And then I also love the boots that go with this outfit. They have little side lacing on the inside, though they do Velcro up the back, but they are just cute, sort of a deep blood red boot. And I love that they've got the sort of um, toe detail where it's like sewn separately. That's very, very cute. And just overall, I think that while the color is strange in this outfit, the overall outfit is really quite nice. And this dress, I should say, it has a floral or like a leaf pattern, looks very autumnal. Um, I, again, other than the color, I, I don't hate it. I think it's a nice sort of natural pattern for a Regency dress. This next outfit, in my opinion, is the star of Caroline's collection. And honestly, one of the best outfits in all of American Girl. I am just absolutely in love with this pelisse. I think it is really, really fantastic. It is in a wool look fabric. It may be actual wool, to be honest. I'm not really sure. It is quite thick. And so it has a really nice like wool weight to it. And then it's trimmed with velvet. So we have a velvet band around the waist and these little like velvet kind of military style bands here. It's a Velcro closure, but it's kind of like a faux button closure because we have these little gold buttons sewn on there and we've got buttons on the waist as well. And then it has a little fur collar and a matching hat. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if I've really seen this style of hat for Regency, but I'm not as well versed with Regency outerwear, uh, but it does go very nicely with this. And this style of like poof top was very popular within bonnet styles. So I don't see why it couldn't be a thing 
if by the time I go to edit this I have found an example of this I will of course pop it up here but uh, if not then know that it's probably not really historically accurate but again the poof style this was popular for the back of a bonnet so I like that and then it's got the velvet band around with the bow and the fur around the brim as well so just really really cute she is also wearing some little striped cloth boots and she's got her ice skates on as well I am not 100% certain that ice skates of this era would have had such curled toes, but she does live in a place where she can ice skate every winter because the lake does freeze in the winter. And these ice skates, I like that the bottoms of them are actually metal, though I do think that the straps could have been made heartier. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these tend to break because we've got little plastic sides right here holding the straps in and then the straps themselves just feel very thin. And she also has a pair of mittens that do a pretty good job at matching her boots. They look just like someone hand knitted her some mittens. So yeah, overall, I absolutely love this outfit. The one thing that's weird to me is that when they show this in catalog or website pictures, they never show it with a dress underneath. And it's far too short to be worn without one. Like you definitely would have had this down to here and or had a dress underneath that. Uh, well, you always would have had a dress underneath that because a police is a coat, it's outerwear. It it wouldn't be worn without a dress. But uh, overall, I think it is so, so pretty, and I probably will make this someday. Next up is Caroline's work dress. That's this one right here. It's kind of in that like Regency jumper dress style, which was a thing. It really was, uh, but it wouldn't really have looked like this. It would have looked more like this. So I like this a lot. I think it's very cute. It's not very historically accurate. It's got this sort of like other piece that's meant to be like a, I don't know, underdress, something like that. Honestly, I'm not sure. I do like the boots. I think the boots are really nice, just like lace up boots. These actually would have been really pretty good for Regency, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm quite pleased with the leather boots and I'm quite pleased that it comes with a cap. I think that's very important and obviously would have been worn by someone like working around inside. If they were outside, they would have worn a bonnet, of course. But yeah, overall, like, the pattern is not quite right. The pattern in the cotton. I like that there's a floral stripe, but there's like too much going on in here. There's too much going on here. So it's very cute, but it is just not quite historically accurate. This is Caroline's holiday outfit. I do think it's quite interesting that for a holiday outfit, she is not wearing like Christmas colors. So that's kind of a nice change. And it's this kind of a nice uh, brocade type fabric. So I, I don't know, I like it. It feels very old for her though. I don't feel like a child would have been wearing something like this at all. It just feels like the colors are kind of wrong for a child, like they're too deep. This really, really large buckle is lovely, but again, I just feel like it kind of elevates it to a different age than like a 10 year old would be wearing. I like that she's wearing gloves. I think that's a nice detail, though. I do find it funny that when American girls put on gloves, at least nowadays, originally they did make some gloves that had actual fingers, but nowadays they'd make them as mittens, which I think is really quite funny. And she's got some lovely decorated ballet flats for this too. So I like that they have that extra addition of the embroidery on there. And I do think that like the neckline detail here is very nice. The height of the waist, all of this feels very nice here and a little more accurate than some of her other stuff. Because it is for evening, this low neckline doesn't bother me, though it's a little bit weird since again, she's like a child, but yeah, it doesn't really bother me. The one part that's a little weird about this is that it also comes with this braided headband. So you can put this braided headband on your Caroline that has like a gold headband too. And that way she can have like a fancier hairdo. I think that is weird and it's honestly doesn't fit her well. And also this tag is enormous. I don't know how you're supposed to hide it, but of course you can't cut off American Girl tags or like things lose their value. So this is pretty silly, but overall I think this is pretty good. Though again, length should be longer. And last in Caroline's collection, we have her birthday dress. Now I was so excited about her birthday dress at first because the level of embellishment on here, I think it is just 
absolutely so pretty and like the built-in fichu to you know fill in the daytime neckline the fitted lower sleeve with the puff like everything just looked so nice and then I saw it up close and I got disappointed so this is a very very thin fabric if you watched my video from last time and I apologize to Mary Ellen because she had the thin fabric dress last time too but Felicity's purple dress and this dress are probably pretty even on like how thin they are this one may even be even thinner so that's disappointing and what's most disappointing is that all of this lovely embellishment on here it's screen printed it's not embroidered. Generally speaking, with American Girl products, when you see embellishment like that, it will be embroidered. So I don't know what was going on during those few years that Caroline was out that they decided to make this screen printed, but it's really a letdown because I feel like that would have elevated this dress to just such a higher level and instead like this one looks so nice in pictures and then you see it in person and it's just mm. that said I mean again the overall look of it absolutely spot on I wish the length were longer and Mary Ellen's not even wearing stockings but I do wish the length were longer but other than that the look is spot on I just wish that it was as good in person as it looks probably to you here on camera right now I also love the shoes that it comes with I don't think that they're necessarily historically accurate because they've got these little like laps with the little laces to me honestly it feels almost like 1920s 1930s I do love that they have a little kitten heel though because that would have been very historically accurate to have that tiny little kitten heel in there so I do like that but overall I was a little disappointed in this dress when I finally got in person and that is everything for Caroline so now on to Josefina now, Josefina was the last doll that came out while the company was still Pleasant Company, which means that the level of detail in her collection tends to be better than someone, say, like Caroline, where things just feel a little bit cheaped out on. Um, now, that said, for Josefina, although I did try and do some research on 1820s fashion in New Mexico at this time, I couldn't find a whole lot. I found a, a lot of information for, like, 1840s on in Mexico and I found a little bit of information about fashion that would have been in like California at the time so when Mexicans had migrated up to California and were you know ranching and things like that which is kind of a similar story to her family except that they were in New Mexico instead of California so her stuff all of her collection is really pretty spot on for what Mexico was looking like in like the 1840s. I just don't know if that is the same sort of stuff as it was in the 1820s. I'm sure that Pleasant Company did their research at the time and hopefully it is or maybe they just found the same sort of information that I did and they styled her as someone in the 1840s. Honestly, I can't say. But that said, I actually did find a fair amount of artwork that showed dresses that are really, really similar, if not in some cases like copies um, for Josefina's collection. So that is really, really nice. Right now she is wearing her camisa. This is her meat outfit. She is wearing her camisa, which is like a long blouse, kind of that like peasant blouse style, but it's really very long. So it acts as a petticoat as well. And then she is wearing her skirt, which has this little bit of eyelet lace peeking out at the bottom. Again, probably went to eyelet lace, but you know, that's a whole different thing. She's got her rebozo draped around her arms right here, her little shawl. And then she also has a belt or a sash type belt that has her leather pouch hanging from it where she can keep things that she needs. She's got her hair just in a braided style. She did originally come with some other flowers and a ribbon. These are replacements that I've made and she's got her little gold earrings in and her little leather shoes. Overall again from what I found online this is honestly very very historically accurate. We've got all those nice natural fibers that I presume would have been readily available. I don't know the history of Mexico and cotton, but from what I was reading, it does sound like cotton was a very popular fabric at the time. Next up, let's take a look at her harvest dress, which again is based on a long sleeve this time camisa with a nice little bit of embroidery. Yes, 
actual embroidery, just like Caroline should have had, but embroidery right here on the camisa. And just so you can see like how long these are, this is where it is coming down to here. This didn't have any separate shoes or anything, so she is wearing, Samantha is just wearing her own shoes and socks. And uh, again, we have a sash around the waist. I really like the weave of these sashes. I think that's quite interesting. And then just a faint pattern in the skirt. These skirts are all like gathered into a waistband style. And then this one has a much nicer lace peeking out around the bottom. Uh, I do have kind of stand-in elastic on these sleeves, but they had elastic right in here, which obviously they wouldn't have been elastic originally. And this camisa I think is really interesting because it's built on this really wide yoke and then it's gathered into the yoke. But yeah, overall, again, it looks quite like a lot of the outfits did that I could find that were 1840s Mexican outfits. And again, similar to that, this is Josefina's Learns a Lesson outfit, which is called her camisa and her indigo skirt. And this one, actually, I found one that's really, really similar to this. So I think that's cool that it's so, so similar. This is such a nice, thick fabric. Like this is Honestly, I don't even know what kind of cotton, but it's a very heavy cotton. I think you can see kind of the weight to it. And again, you can see just how long her camisa is underneath. So that does serve as the petticoat as well. I do also like the lace around the neckline on this one. I think they did a really nice job with that. It looks like kind of like a hand crocheted lace. And then again, she has her sash. And the last outfit that kind of follows the camisa guideline that we have been having here is her feast day finery here. Now I absolutely love the shawl that goes with this. Speaking of embroidery, I think that is just really, really beautiful. The fringe on that, all the embroidery, it's just lovely. Even if it is on like a polyester fabric, I think it is really, really beautiful. She has a stand-in sash, but her sash in the original was also orange. This is just a ribbon. But we again have the camisa, except this time we have really, really fun sleeves to go with the camisa. I think you can just see all of those ruffles on there and the ruffle around the neckline as well. I think that is just so, so pretty. And then this gorgeous turquoise bottom layer to this skirt here which also has embroidery all the way around the bottom. All of this pattern right here, this isn't part of like the fabric of the skirt. This is actually all embroidery and then with a ribbon edge. So they just did such a beautiful job on this outfit. It also comes with this black lace fan. They did a wonderful, wonderful job on this outfit and based again on like those pictures from the 1840s or those drawings from the 1840s that this does look really, again, quite spot on. Oh, and this one also comes with little satin mules too. And then these last three Josefina outfits that I have follow more of that like Regency style dress guideline. And so all of them fit wise are really quite nice. You can see we've got the Ampere waist right here with the gathering into the waist, little puffed sleeves. I really like the ruffles around the bottom of this one. I think they're super, super fun. The one thing that I feel like is a little weird for this is the fact that this fabric pattern appears to be on the bias. Now, frankly, it was probably just printed diagonally. As far as American Girl goes, I doubt they made it all on the bias, but something they did frequently in the Regency was they would have sleeves cut on the bias and occasionally you would see like a ruffle cut on the bias as well, but it would have not happened to have the entire dress on the bias or it would have hung out of whack. I also really can't speak much to this leather vest. I love the embossing on the vest. I think it's really quite pretty, though it does become a very, very stiff piece that I feel like doesn't actually wear well on the dolls. But this is her summer riding dress and hat. And the hat is just a nice functional straw hat. It does have a little tie to keep it on under the chin while you are riding. Uh, but I think that that is whoop, quite nice there. And then the dress overall is very cute. And I love the color. I don't know that the color is historically accurate for New Mexico at this time, um, but it is a really fun color and the print certainly feels very Regency. This outfit right here is her party dress and Spencer. So underneath we've got kind of a standard Regency dress. It does have little puffed sleeves, but this jacket's a little hard to get off, so I'm not gonna show those to you. And just a flat fitted bodice. There's this weird tab moment going on around the waistline that I don't love. And it is also echoed down here at the hem. Again, don't love that. I think that's just kind of strange. I do like all of the pin tucks down here at the bottom of the skirt. I mentioned this in the last video, but a lot of time on kids' clothing, at least later in the 1800s, 
carrots that was used so that it could grow with the child, um, like the dress could actually grow with the child. The Spencer I think is really mostly wonderful. It is a wool feel. Again, I don't know if it's actual wool, especially since this is one of her newer outfits, um, but it's definitely a wool feel. This one has functional buttons, which is kind of nice, but almost impossible to put on. And it is fully lined with like a nice sleek lining fabric as well. So they just did a good job on that. We've got some gathering going into the sleeves and this is not going to show up on camera at all because this is black, but oh, maybe it will. But we've got kind of the Regency shoulder going on where it comes farther back and we have the seam line like back here. I just think that's kind of a nice detail. And then we also have like the curved back seams. I appreciate that they did that because again that's just like a hallmark of the Regency period so it's nice to see that on doll clothes. The one thing that I think is weird and maybe it's just that this is a slightly newer jacket and the newer stuff and the newer dolls tends to be a little smaller than the older ones but it doesn't close all the way on the back of her arm like at her wrist. It just it doesn't close. You see that gap of skin and that's really pretty odd. And lastly, I feel like this is the most beloved of all of Josefina's outfits. This is her Christmas dress and lace mantilla. And this dress is just, I don't know, I, I remember loving this as a child. So it was really exciting to then get this dress now as an adult. Uh, Josefina was a doll that I wanted as a kid, but then never actually got as a kid. And then wound up kind of growing out of American Girl within kind of that year of wanting her. So I guess it was for the best. But it, this dress plays a really big part in her story because it is actually made for her in the story. And she has a little doll that matches. And as you can see here, this utilizes that bias fabric for the sleeve that I was talking about, whereas the stripes are running vertically on the rest of the dress. Has just a very simple ribbon around the waist, little ruffle around the collar, and then the puff at the top of the sleeves as well. And it comes with little black flat shoes, which seem very, you know, standard, normal as they should be. I love the lace mantilla. I think it's just so beautiful and delicate. And it's on this lovely, like, crown shaped comb that goes into the hair. Hopefully you can see that. It's really, really beautiful. And then this also actually comes with an undergarment as well. Now, maybe this would have been like a child's undergarment or maybe this was something that was popular in Mexico or New Mexico, but I've never seen like an all-in-one piece for the Regency like this. So it's all cotton, got a little ruffle around the feet right here, little like spaghetti straps up top and faux buttons down the front with some bows at the front. But yeah, it's a little funky. It like doesn't have a waist really at all. It just has a yoke and then like no waist. So I think that's an interesting piece. Um, I wanted to keep it out so I could show it to you all. But yeah, that comes actually with the Christmas dress. So that is going to be it for me for this video. I had a lot less to show you this time than I did last time, but hopefully you still learned something and enjoyed this video. There will be a next video coming out next month, which will be on the 1850s girls. So that is going to be Kirsten, of course, and also Marie, Grace, and Cecile. So do be sure that you're subscribed so that you know when that video comes out next month. But if you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, as I said, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with my sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional random costuming related content like this out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. And you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, Jean, and Janelle. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!